Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And I mean every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is the day to always pull your heart out to Jesus. To always trust him. Even though when things are not adding up, when it's not even making sense. See, our problem is, we thinking because we don't see nothing that God is not working. Our problem is we think when, we think when things are falling apart that it's over with. And actually, that's when it actually is working for us. See, that's why we got to continue to pick up our crosses and follow Jesus. That's why we got to continue to stay in his will and stay in his words and stay in his promises and rest and what he is saying, because God will never leave us, hallelujah, and he will never forsake us. At the end of the day, it is Jesus that have our back all the way to the very end. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing, because the God we serve, hallelujah, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he has in the palm of his hands. And he is working everything out to his perfect will. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, to your life, or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me your thanks, give me your praise, give me your glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're ordering our steps. We thank you, Father God, for your guidance and your direction. We thank you, Father God, because you always, you always make yourself available for those who seek after you, for those who cry out your name, and for those, Father God, who's always pouring our heart into you each and every day. Your word tells us, Father God, in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst. So, Heavenly Father God, as we are praying right now, oh, Father God, we know for a fact, we know for sure, Father God, that you're in the midst of these prayers right now. Oh, Father God, we know that you have listened. We know that you have heard and he has answered every last one of our prayers right now. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we give you thanks, praise, and glory, Father God, because, God, we know for a fact that you are turning things around in our life right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, you continue to have your way with us, Father God. You continue to lay your hands on us, Father God. You continue to, Father God, you continue to, Father God, for you to continue to use us, God. Lift us up right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your love that you continue to give us. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for how patient you are with us, God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now today, God. That's going to keep us full today. It's going to keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Heavenly Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus. But right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, give you all thanks, give you all praise, give you all glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, today is the day, hallelujah, that you have made. And we're so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Oh, Heavenly Father God, allow your love to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place right now today. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out and should not return back board today, Father God. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, God, you are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, this is your time. This is your moment. Glory, hallelujah. That I know for a fact that you about to show up. That I know for a fact that you about to show out. I believe and I declare the creek right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. That someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will. You should get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, all but Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brother and sister's life. I'm asking you, Father God, for you to continue to lay hands on every last one of my brothers and sisters right now. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to lift their spirits up right now today. I'm asking you, Father God, for a sign for my brothers and sisters. Send them my angel for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to speak a word to my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you for a favor. And the favor that I'm asking you for, Jesus, for a blessing for my brothers and sisters. A breakthrough for my brothers and sisters. A miracle for my brothers and sisters. That you will open up a door for my brothers and sisters. That you will put them at the right place at the right time for my brothers and sisters. That you will send rain in their hearts for my brothers and sisters. That you will send them some help right now today, Father God, what they need help in, Father God, for my brothers and sisters. And Father God, your word says there's anything too hard for you, Father God. So, Father God, I believe and I declare, Father God, there's not too hard for you, and I know that you already done it for every last one of my brothers and sisters right now today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord, right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are confident. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds so we hear your soft, still voice. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sins today, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for never remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for this clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray and praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters, and one body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, there's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue, the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you read it for God's word, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. We serve an awesome and we serve an amazing God. And he is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Today's word is, it be your own people. It be people that you know. It be people who you grew up with. It be people that you want to precate with. That you played in the same sandbox with, that you played hang go see with, it's been people that you wanted to free lunch with. It be people who you thought would give you the support, who would have your back, would be the own with your own people, would be praying on your downfall. Oh yeah, the moment you step out of their circle, 
the moment you step out and want to venture to do something else, the moment that you leave a certain place that you grew up in, you were born and raised in, and you move somewhere else, and that moment right there, you receive a call from the Lord, and you receive that call, you accept that call, and you start walking in your purpose of that call, and you start doing the will of God, and the moment that you go back to the same place that you was raised in, that you was brought up in, in your mind, you know for a fact that these people are going to have your back. You know for a fact that these people are going to support you. You know for a fact that these people are going to sit down and talk about you. But them be the own, them be the main ones who will not support you, who will look down on you, who will bring up all your dirt, all your past, what you used to do because in their mind, they still thinking that you're the same person that you was when you was hanging with them. And the first thing they're going to have their audacity to say, oh man, I remember when we used to smoke together. I remember when we used to drink together. I remember when we used to go to the club together. I remember when we used to do this. I remember when we used to do that. I remember when we, we used to wild out, do all these things. They will never accept who you are, especially the new you. They just won't do it. You'll get more help. You'll get more recognition. You'll get, you'll get more people that will talk about you from people from the outside who don't know you, who didn't grow up with you, than the people who you actually knew. I'm just keeping it real with you, my brothers. I'm just keeping it real with you, my sisters. And I know some of y'all right now today, you had just witnessed that because in your mind, you thought these people that you used to hang with will look up to you. They give you some type of recognition. You thought they'll support you. But now all of a sudden they're looking down on you. All of a sudden right now, they say, man, what are you talking about? You ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. Man, you used to be a drug dealer. Man, you used to cuss. Man, I know you ain't doing it because I know what you and I used to do. We were just doing it about a year ago. But see, things can happen and things can turn around within a year, but they mind so small, they mind still in the gutter, they still think that you're still doing the same thing what you should do with them. And when you come back and the moment you say, oh man, I don't get down like that no more. All of a sudden, they're looking down on you. All of a sudden, they got a whole lot to say about you. All of a sudden, they want to bring up the old you, but they never want to talk about the new you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. This word is making sense to somebody. They all want to bring up the old you, but they never want to talk about the new version of you. They, they leave that part out. And yes, it be your own family member too. It be them too as well. The first thing you say, man, how you going to fool us? We know you. We some kin to you. Yeah, we might be some kin to you, but you know the old me. But this is a new version of me. Do you know the new version of me? And they have fixed their face and fixed their mouth and say, oh yeah, I know you. No, good word, they don't know nothing about the new version. Anybody can talk about the old version of you. That's easy to bring up. But could they talk about the new version? And that's the part that makes them sick. That's the part that they cannot comprehend. That's the part they don't understand about you. They don't understand the new version of you. So they start having people to turn their back on you. They have people to turn their nose up against you because there's nothing they can say about the new you. They leave that part out. But they're always trying to bring and drag your name and your character but the old part of you, they still think that it's relevant as it is today. That part over with. We don't live that life no more. So if you still bring up the old me, then there's no way in the world that you can see who the new, who the new repackaged me is. Because I'm talking about the new package of me. I'm talking about the new repackage of me. Could we talk about that? And that's the part they have nothing to say about that. But the people from the outside talks about the new you because they have they have no they don't want no they don't want no 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 pause of the old you see the old you is a testimony to them but see they they're intrigued with the new you but the people that you grew up with 
and your own kind of people that's still stuck on the old version of you. Come on now, somebody know what I'm talking about right now. Somebody say, oh yeah, the Lord is talking to me today. Oh yes, he is. He is talking about you. I had that problem, my brothers and sisters. I've been in Georgia now for going on about 12 years now. And, um, and every time I go back home to Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm born and raised at, when I go back there, the moment I started going back, I, I took a notice on how people, when they saw me, they put their head down. I wonder, the moment I got around them, the conversation wasn't, 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 wasn't pleasing to me as it was when I was an old person. I took the moment they sit there and say, oh man, what's going on with you, man? You don't change. I said, yeah, I guess I have changed. The same way that I change is the same way that y'all guys can change too. I'm not looking down on y'all because this is who I am now. I'm just telling y'all, if God can change me, he can change y'all too if you really want it. But they were so stuck on the old me. Their mind was still fixed on the old me when I was in Charlotte, even my family. They were still stuck on that. Even they realized I was menacing the word, they let me say, that what you doing now? That what passed me on? Yes. And I seen how they had this frown on their face like, man, this man must be tripping. We know what he used to do. He used to sell drugs with us. He used to smoke with us. He used to drink with us. He used to go to the club with us. This man right here just love to fight with us. Now all of a sudden, would he think he better than us? No. I never sit there and said I was better than y'all. I was doing what God wanted me to do. I'd accepted my call. So I knew at that moment that I was never going to be accepted in my hometown. I knew right then and there that they always going to look at me different. I knew, I knew right then and there that I was not welcome with the people who I used to keep it with, even my own family. I knew I was an outsider to them. I knew at that moment. And some of y'all are going through that right now today. You are an outsider to the people that you grew up with. They don't look at you the same. They don't want to rock with you no more. They don't want to hang with you no more. They don't want to conversate with you no more. But that's okay. Because God has put new people in your life. God has put strangers in your life Who's going to kick it with you? Who's going to rock with you? Who is going to support you, my brothers and sisters? But it's a crime and shame be your own people that's praying on your downfall because they don't want you to outdo them. They don't want you to be better than them. They still want you to be messed up. They still want you to be dirty and ashy who you used to be when they had something to talk about. See, when you was dirty, when you was ashy, when you was messed up in the world, they had a lot to say. They had their whole notebook taking down notes on you. But the new version, they got nothing to say about that. They don't want to take notes about that. They don't want to give you your props about that. But they always want to talk about your past. They don't want to talk about when you was messed up. They don't want to talk about when you was abused and you was used and you was damaged. They want to talk about that. But can they talk about the new you? Come on, somebody. Can they talk about the new you? No, they cannot. You're not welcome. You got to tell you, know what? I'm okay with that. If I'm not welcome back in my own town. I'm okay if I'm not welcome with the people who I should keep it with. My own kind. My own people. I'm okay with it. Because I know God is going to bless me with the people who will be okay with the new version of me? Are you following what I'm saying right now? Glory be to God. Let's turn about to Luke chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 24. That's Luke chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 24. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I tell you the truth. He continued. No prophet. Mm, no Prophet is accepted in his hometown. Which means that if you are a prophet, if you are a man of God, if you are called by God, even if you are a bishop, a reverend, a minister, a apostle, whatever it is, if you are preaching the word of God, 
There is no way in the way that you are accepted in your own time. You can't. They right there tells you them are the ones that's been called by man. But the one who's been called by God, they are not accepted. They are not approved in their own time anymore. Because they're not looking at the new package of you. They're still going on, on the old package. They're still bringing up old things who you used to be, what you're doing, what you used to do. But they can't talk about the new you. Are you following what I'm saying? That's what the word of God is telling you. He said, I tell you the truth, which means God is a man that he cannot lie, nor a son of man that he cannot even change his mind. So he's telling you off, off the base, I'm telling you the truth. I don't care what nobody is telling you. I don't care what nobody is saying. But, the, but you can take my words and you can rest on them because I'm telling you the truth about this. I don't care what the other preachers are saying. I don't care what the other apostles are saying. I don't care what the other reverend is saying. I don't care what the other pastor is saying. But I'm the man that's telling you the truth. I'm the man that's telling you right out the horse's mouth. I tell you the truth. He can tell you. He said no prophet at all. Not one prophet. Not one minister. Not one bishop. Not one reverend. Not one apostle. Hallelujah is accepted in its hometown. And I assure you that there will be many windows in Israel in the latter of time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. He said, I'm telling the truth. He said, no, no prophet, no man of God has been called by God is accepted in his hometown. And you're not accepted. They're going to look down on you. Jesus was not accepted in his hometown. The first thing they say, if you son of Jesse, are you the carpenter? They never wanted to see the new part of Jesus. They brought up who he used to be. What he used to do. But they, they could not accept the new version of Jesus. They could not accept the calling that was on his life. They cannot accept the, the light that was shining on him. They cannot accept the anointing that was They cannot accept the blessing was on him. They cannot accept that the favor was on him. And that's why they are never accept you, my sisters. That's why they will never accept you. They are praying your downfall. Your friends will pray on your downfall. Yes, they will. Your family members will pray on your downfall. Your in-laws will pray on your downfall. People who used to work with will pray on your downfall. People that you used to go to church with will pray on your downfall. That's why you will never be accepted and you will never be approved back in your hometown. When you ride past and say, hey, I'll holler at you. I'm adios. I see you, Arthur La Vista, and keep going because they'll never look at you the same. If they didn't look at Jesus the same, if they did not accept him, what make you think they're going to accept you? I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word is for today. But God says it's okay if you're not accepted in the place that you was once raised and born in because you will be accepted in the place that God has blessed you with right now. And if you're the one that's going through it right now, he's telling you right now, you can rest this sure. He said, you're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. I'm going, to send, I'm going to send strangers your way. Who's going to help you? Who's going to accept the calling? Hallelujah. That's on your life because you do it my will, my father's will. Don't worry about the people that you grew up with. God said, it's worry about what I'm doing in your life. And if this word is for you, and this word has resonated with you and it's moved to your spirit today. Go on ahead, Jesus like button. Go on ahead and subscribe button to us well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. By us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in this life right now today. And if you have not if you have, if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. 
Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It does not matter if you know them. It does not matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name, I love every last one of y'all. Amen.